وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. My brothers and sisters, my dearest children, indeed tomorrow is January 29th. And January 29th has been declared to be the national day of remembrance to those who were shot and killed in Quebec City while they were praying in the Quebec Mosque. Indeed, a tragedy that took place five years ago that have not only shattered, shook, shook the Muslim community and made them, uh, made them mourn but also have shaken the entire nation. And the government have declared last year, January 29, to be the National Day of Remembrance for this tragedy and an action day to combat Islamophobia. What's tragic is that even though after the tragedy, and the lobby of the different officials from the government and the politicians and the lip service that was presented to suit the feelings of those who were mourning and the members of the Muslim community across the country. The actions of violence against Muslims continued. In 2000 and 2021, in September 12, a day that will never personally forgot in one of the biggest masjids in Toronto, a brother that is so dear to my heart was slaughtered in front of the masjid. He stood by the door of the masjid to guard, and if that perpetrator were to make it inside, then the first person he would have met would be myself. I still feel these memories and flashback memories come to my mind once in a while for brother Muhammad laying on the ground with his throat slain and his blood on the ground. This is a reality. After that, a year after that, on June 6, 2021, the whole nation from coast to coast were shocked also when they heard about the attack on a Muslim family in London, Ontario where four family members were killed and a young man ended up in a critical care in the, in the hospital to recover afterwards to realize that he have lost both parents and a sibling and a grandmother. This is the reality that in Canada, we are at the highest, we have the highest number of Islamophobia crime among the G7 countries. Yet, we still hear officials talking about Islamophobia as uh, not a reality. Yet, we're still people, we still hear people uh, not con convinced and not considering Islamophobia <coughs> to be a real issue that needs to be dealt with. In Quebec City, there are six widows that have lost their husbands. There are 12, 17 orphans who will be living the rest of their life without a father, who will be continuously remembering that Sunday when a man walked into the masjid with guns in his hand, automatic guns, which unfortunately was not, he was not activated at the time of his attack, otherwise, the number of those who were killed could have been more than six individuals and he could have probably injured more than the number who were injured. And what's tragic is that afterwards, when he was sentenced by the court for a lifetime in prison and no eligibility for parole for 40 years, later on, the court it changed the ruling and said he's eligible for Boro after 25 years. How shameful this is. How shameful our court system is to be uh, littling 
the blood that was spilled and their souls <coughs> that were murdered on that day and the number <coughs> of those who were, who were affected as a result of this crime. We continue to see injustice being applied to the members of our community. We need actions. We need concrete, solid actions from the government to combat Islamophobia because it is real. It is impacting our life. It's not only the members of these families who are impacted by losing a loved one. We're seeing this spilled all over. We're seeing this spilled all over the community. We're seeing the impact of Islamophobia on almost every single member of our community. And more specifically, our, our children and our sisters. Many sisters have taken the hijab. Many children are, are, do not have the courage to be representing themselves as Muslims anymore. We're seeing this happening in our community. This is reality. There are those who have stopped coming to the masajid because they feel the masajid are not safe. This is a reality. And allow me today to expose one segment from our community, our children, our youth, those who have a lot of respect for, those who I admire a lot for their strength and I sympathize with for the challenges they're enduring in their life. Maybe your children would not be talking to you about what they exposed to when they go to school. Maybe they would not talk to you about the discrimination and racism that they, are, they feel as they live in this society we're living in. But believe it or not, it does exist. It's there, it's impacting their life. It's impacting their life and they need to be empowered. Have conversation with your children. Talk to them. See what's inside their heart. Get to know what's inside their mind. Because whatever they're going through is very challenging compared to what we had to go through in our teen's life. If your child is not is strong, not, is, is not willing to represent himself or herself outside home as a Muslim, do not take this as an offense. If your daughter come to you and say, I don't feel comfortable wearing my hijab outside, do not feel offended. Do not say how shameful this is going to be in front of the rest of the community and in front of my friends and family members. And quote me right, do not say I am uh, calling for a tolerance of, 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 of not wearing hijab or not, not, uh, I'm not calling for, uh, for being less of proud of your deen. What I'm calling here for is a more effective communication between you and your children. If your child has these issues, communicate with them rationally. Talk to them in a way that would help them would convince them, would empower them from inside out because using force is ineffective. Using force is not acceptable and it gives negative impacts and results. If you are unable to talk to your children, if you are unable to empower them, use the different resources we do have in our community. We do have many resources, exclude the Imams. And the community leaders, we do have alhamd, a generation that have grown up here in this in this in, in Canada that is rooted in their deen. They have lived the experience of being challenged as Muslimin, and they're able to stand up for themselves and others around them and able to empower the younger generations to come after them. Let's use them. Let, get, let's, let us give them the chance to to empower our children so that our children can feel that they are being part of the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal's da'wah in, in, in this, in this, on this earth. As Allah said in the Quran, 
ذات البروج واليوم المشهود واليوم الموعود وشاهد ومشهود قتل اصحاب الاخدود اذ هم عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود النار ذات الوقود اذ هم عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود الله عز وجل set gave us a beautiful story in surah al-buruj in which he made an oath was sama'i that al-buruj by the sky that has the towers referring to the to the to the uh, different stars that shine in the darkness of the night when it is dark on the earth we are guided by these stars in the sky allah is making an oath by them referring to another fact that there are other stars who are living on earth those who sacrifice for their deen, those who would give up even their life for Allah Azza wa Jal. وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الْبُرُوجِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَوْعُودِ وَالشَّاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ Referring to the famous story that, uh, <coughs> that in which the tyrant had uh, digged the trench and throw the people in the fire for believing in Allah Azza wa Jal and disbelieving into him. وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ And Allah Azza wa Jal says, the only purpose, the only reason why he threw them into the fire, for believing in Allah Azza wa Jal, the Aziz, the Hameed. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. To the empowerment of the Quran, to those who are who want to be empowered by the Quran and read it and comprehend it. My younger brothers. Being challenged for your deed qualify you to get the rewards of 50 of the Sahaba of the Prophet This is what the Prophet said, that there will be time when others will be coming after you who are holding on their deed as they're holding on the fire. And they will be getting multiple rewards, 50 times of what you will be getting. And when the Sahaba inquired and said, Ya Rasulullah, 50 times of their rewards or our rewards. And the Prophet said, your rewards, the rewards of the Sahaba, those who met the Prophet وسلم, the first generation, you will be getting 50 times of their rewards because they were able to see the Prophet and believed in him and were empowered by him. But you read about the Prophet. You heard about the Prophet, and you knew that you will be challenged. And without seeing the Prophet, you accepted the challenge upon yourself. فَطُوبَى لِلْغُرَبَابِ Tuba is a beautiful tree in Al-Jannah. Tuba is the Jannah that Allah has prepared for those غُرَبَى, strangers. They are not strangers because they have left their hometown and came to relocate in another location. They are strangers, غُرَبَى. Because the majority around them is not following the right path. You will be singled out because you're growing a beard, or you're proud of your name as Muhammad, or because you want to be able to pray your salah in school time, or because you try, you're trying to be different and unique and you do not intermingle with the opposite gender, or because you are fasting in the day of Ramadan. <laughs> Because you live a unique difference and a unique and different lifestyle that is completely different than everyone around you. You're unique, you are gharib, you're a stranger. If you feel that way, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah because you are on the right path. Alhamdulillah, you are like Ammar radiallahu anhu. The one who took upon himself the challenge to believe in Allah and disbelieve in the kuffar and the idols and the statues that the kuffar used to worship at his time. He believed in Allah Azza wa Jalla and took upon himself the challenge seeing his own parents killed in front of his own eyes. And he said, I believe in Allah Azza wa Jalla. You will be like Bilal radiallahu anhu who used to continuously say Ahadun Ahad, one, one referring to Allah Azza wa Jal. And when he was told why you continue to repeat that word, he replied that if I know another word that can make the disbelievers more angry, I would have said it. Allahu Akbar to the strength 
that this that Bilal had obtained after he was a marginalized person, a slave in Mecca that no one knows about now. His name is in all over the Islamic books to empower the generations to come about his strength, about his power, about his steadfastness, about his patience. Yes, indeed, it is difficult to live your life as Muslim. Yes, indeed, you will be challenged. But you know what? You're paving the road. You're setting, you're setting the, the, the icons. You're setting the, the examples for others to come after you who will be inspired by you and by your actions and by your strength and your patience and steadfastness on the path in the name of Allah Azza wa Jal. My brothers and sisters, it is always easy to talk. Parents might not have the same style of persuasion to convince their children. Again, please be gentle with your children. Don't think that they, if they, are, they don't want to identify themselves outside home, that they're rejecting their deed. Don't think they're, they're, they're being a uh, uh, list of believers in the faith they have embraced since birth, but rather live with them the challenge they're going through. It is tremendous pressure that they're going through. The way to deal with it, as is said again over and over again, seek out for help. Get the support needed. Let someone talk to them. And if they needed more time, let it be. It's not the end of life. There's always a chance for them to come back to the boundaries of the deen of Allah Azza What is it critical and unacceptable is to be rigid with them and they run away from home and they end up living somewhere else away from you. That's tragic. And that is something that officials need to be aware of. That Islamophobia is not only killing members of our community and it's not only making children orphans and women widows. It is also impacting the life of our teens and our sisters. It's causing fraction and problems within the family members, in the relationship between the husband and the wife, and the relationship between the children and the parents. We want them to be aware of that. So that when we come to intervene and deal with families who have challenges in, in the family, we would not be always giving excuses and try to camouflage things and try to present ourselves in a nice way. They will understand that we're dealing with a cruel reality that needs real work and needs intervention. Alhamdulillah, Children's Aid Society nowadays is more open-minded and tolerant compared to my experience with them in the past when we used to deal with them and hammer them and fight back again. Now they're softening up a little bit and understanding that we as a community have special needs, have different understanding of how we raise our children. And now they understand imams can help. Counselors in the community can, help, can, can be of support. We no longer need to see our children running, being relocated somewhere else. More social workers need to be recruited within the social work system, within the children's aid society in different offices of government. And this is being pushed by NCCM. Because NCCM, the National Council of Canadian Muslims, is calling upon us about the first anniversary, or, or the, the fifth anniversary of the killing, or the first national day, the first year of the national day of remembrance, which declared by the government, as I said last year, they're calling upon us and the members of the community to not to forget and to consider this a day that would motivate us to act. And the first action they want us to do, and I want every single person to do, you will leave the masjid, is to pick up the phone or send an email to your MPP and say to them, why is it taking so long for our family, London Family Act, to be passed in the Parliament, in the House of Commons? And CCM have worked very hard after consultation with members of the community and have come up with a resolution. Wallahi, personally, I'm very impressed with their work. 
group of professionals who have given up their jobs as lawyers, as professionals, and dedicated their time to serve the deen of Allah Azzawajal and to defend our community. They deserve our attention. They deserve our, our support to them. They have not only cried and shown sympathy to officials, they have stood up and firm, and they demanded with actions, and they presented an agenda, a bill to be passed, to be a law that will be changing or will be helping to protect the Muslim community in Ontario and hopefully across the nation. They have come up with the, our, 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 our London Family Act, which include many points among them, is to reform the education in schools so that, that the negative presentation of Islam would be eliminated and more appropriate presentation of Islam would be presented to children in school. And also at the same time, teachers will be more informed on how to deal with Muslim children and to, how to present Islam. And also call upon ending the actions of hatred, uh, whether by white supremacist groups and, uh, or, or the, the, uh, the hatred that is promoted online and take real concrete actions that will uh, prevent this, this avalanche of hatred that is, that, that is systematically being created by different advocacy groups and by the media to change it to more a style of harmony be between ourselves as a, a minority and the rest of the people in this society. Please take the time, visit their website, NCCM, or National Council of Canadian Muslims. Find out what they have. Subscribe to their email list so that they will be sending you periodically their actions at work and they will be able to interact with them. In Allah, in Allah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rahmatu, who was trying, 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 أبناء إيمانك نواصين يا رب بيدك ماضي يا رب فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاءك نسألك اللهم بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحد من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك بأن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيعا منوبنا يا الله اللهم اجعله جلالا لهمومنا وأحزاننا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اهدنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم اهدنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم ارحمنا برحمتك اللهم ارحم أبناءنا وارحم أزواجنا اللهم نسألك برحمتك بأن تثبتنا على دينك اللهم نسألك برحمتك أن تثبتنا على دينك اجعلنا هداة مهديين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم رب الناس مذهب البأس اشفي جميع مرضى المسلمين شفاء لا يغادر سقما اللهم يا رب السماوات والأرض ورب العرش العظيم ارحم جميع موت المسلمين رحمة واسعة اللهم من علينا قبل الموت بتوبة اللهم أكرمنا عند الموت بشهادة اللهم آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى الصلاة